Morning guys and girls, Jesse here from Build Drive Race. I'm just doing a quick job for my dad. We have been running the Anglia with the 250 block and um, trying to keep everything kind of cheap and stock and grassroots. And um, we either run two inch and 932 Strombergs or one single one. The only thing is with the little space under the mid mount, uh, it's pretty hard to tune the two inch and 932s and they're pretty small anyway. That's just what comes on the standard 250 pre cross flow. So today we've got this adapter plate that fits a WW Stromberg, which came out in like, I don't know, um, HQ 253 autos and stuff like that. Bigger carby with a uh, dual barrel throat thing. The only thing is we need to machine this out because it goes from the dual throat back to that inch and 932 hole. We're gonna machine that out. We did used to have a 2V head, but it, the runners came out too far and hit the driver's side foot tunnel. So we've gone away with the 2V head and yeah, I suppose you could say it's just like having a bigger bottle of Coke, but drinking out of the same straw. You've still got that bottleneck. Gonna make a plate. Machine this down and then make a plate to go over that. And then rip that inner circle out and mount her up. So we'll see how we go. We'll have to weld some cast. So fingers crossed that'll go all right. I'll do a stainless peno run first and then put some um, arc rods over it. So the first thing I decided to do with the milling head was to turn the tungstens around. They're just a normal um, tungsten carbide tip, but all the tips had been really severely chipped so this clip you're just undoing that screw and turning it to a decent face to cut otherwise it would have um, had like a chattering effect and probably made a really so good i finish. totally don't know what i'm doing guy work reckon that i could run it at about 800 rpm and don't use coolant so it doesn't block up so i might just listen to him but yeah i've just finally got this head onto the bed and the um the carbies were like i think the ford and all that had it from factory that the carbies were tilted a little bit to accommodate for air fuel or something so what i'm going to do now is i've just dial indicator on there so that i can get this face nice and flat and machine it relative to what it is so nothing changes but that's nearly flat and that's how much height i've got so yeah once we get that it'll just be a few cuts and then a matter of welding that base on and going from there all right well, i got it within like 0.4 of a mil um, with these things here but the increments go in like they go in like one one or two mil increments so that's as good as we're going to get with that so i'm just going to have a play around and maybe put a paper shim underneath it just to get that last bit so i've got that other in lifted it up and you can probably nearly see it from there that it's unlevel i've mucked up something or when I've done it up, it's moved a bit, so I'm just gonna redo that. My fault, but um, yeah, redo that and start again. So I fixed that um, I fixed that level, and then I've just, while that's on, and I've gone a bit slower because I feel more comfortable that way. That's a big, big tool for my inexperience. So um, yeah, I've just raised up the head until it's just start to tick, and then I'll set this X at zero, or is it Y? Doesn't matter. But, um, and then just take 0.2 cuts, nice and easy. And yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that, take a lot of passes and TIG weld while we'll the plate to adapt the new carby. Once that was machined flat, we now have got a flat surface to work out how large we can make the hole without protruding out the sides of the log manifold. It is a little bit smaller, as in the walls of the log manifold don't allow you to fully cut to the inside of the gasket, but it's still a lot bigger of a hole than the past. So I've just created a uh, template with the gasket and then roughly machined there with a 19 mil end mill. The best thing you can do is use the largest end mill you can, but this is what I had to work with and it's worked fine. 
One thing that I did learn with those wedges was not to do them up too tight. Tight enough so that the workpiece doesn't move, but it was a, a scenario where I did chip off a little bit of the head in a non-important spot, but yeah, that's no good. So there was an unbelievable amount of swarf in there. So if you do this, just make sure you take every chance you can to blow everything out. And uh, yeah, like there's, it's just was everywhere. So that little piece of swarf can really go a long way. But anyway, now we're up to drilling the holes in the adapter. And the best thing I've sort of wanted to, uh, found was that from corner to corner, and then double check that the distances between every side were the same. It's pretty hard to go off the side of the casting because it's not perfectly square so don't expect if you have one of these links manifold adapter things as you can see it's a couple of them square so when you mark your holes just double check that the that they're square and that they drill you can drill them in with the next plate that we make The next plate that we need to make is a steel plate that welds to the manifold and bolts to the alloy adapter. I've just chosen to use a 6mm plate so I can get a good amount of thread to tap into it and so that I also can weld it without it bowing or giving way or anything like that. Basically you just want to make it the same overall size as the alloy adapter so that you can bolt it together and then you want to drill the holes the same size so that, that matches up too. I've just decided to drill two holes and use the oxy cutter to make that, to cut out the excess and make it an oval shape. And this is what a drill bit sees when you're drilling. So now that you've done that, we can bolt it all together and run pilot holes through the alloy adapter that we've marked and it'll have exactly the same reference as the steel one. And then jump forwards like 10 minute hours or so, nah, 10 minutes or so, and you can tap them holes and basically clean up all the edges and get ready to weld it to your manifold. Alright guys, we're pretty much at the end of this little job here. Uh, of fixed that and I've made this slightly bigger than the hole on the head so it gives me a little bit of a lap to make it easy, easier to weld. The thing that you have to be careful of with this is that you use the countersunk one so you've got a flat face so that it doesn't inter interfere with the gasket. Probably not ideal but it's the only really um, way around that for the Lynx adapter kit anyway. And um, yeah, so once this is done, you can probably put any larger carby really because the adapter kit's pretty universal. Alright YouTube fam, a couple of hours later, decided to come home and weld it because I don't want to stay at the workshop for too long but the, um, so the first weld will be the, um, well I've just got this all attached so I can tack it in the right spot but that steel plate to the cast steel head which I'll just do a, a slight TIG run, that's just going to seal it up so I'll just use 1.6 stainless wire for that probably set around 90 amps. I've got enough thickness to play with. So I'll set that around 90 amps and run a nice bead on the inside. Yeah, it's a weld cast. I don't even know what this is, but someone's welded it before me and it looks like it's with a stick welder. Yeah, when you weld cast, you can use low hydrogen electrodes, which something like the 
WIA 16 TCs. This one will do. I'm just gonna do a tack either side because it's already sealed up just to give it a bit of strength. And then um, just one last match port and that should be it. So yeah, I'll just turn this on and I'm using the, using the foot pedal because I want it to be more like a race car. No, I just want a bit more control in case it gets hot or whatever. If you need to weld it and your stainless thing doesn't stick, try some cast rods. And also what you can do is post cooling. So instead of letting it cool down at room temp, you can, what I've seen before is lime powder. If you stick something in lime powder, it'll take ages and ages, like days to cool down. And what that does, I think, is like everything is like a weld pool and then as it crystallizes, if, it, if one crystallizes quicker than the other material, it'll crack away. So that's what the post cooling does. But yeah, so we'll just set this to 90. TIG weld wobble. Oh, so I just realized that the um, at 120 amps, which I turned it up to for the stitch, it cuts out after about 50 mils. So I'm not gonna record the rest of it because it's gonna be frustrating watching it cut out all the time. But yep, it um, welds up all right. Not the tidiest weld, but. Yeah, so I weld all around there and yeah. Alright guys, it's dark and raining, so I'm gonna end the video here. If you're still watching, yeah, thanks for watching, and um, leave a, a comment if you're interested or want to know anything. I think it's a pretty basic mod to do for a pre-cross low 250. You can obviously um, always go out and get the 2V head, but in our case, being in an Anglia, there's no foot room for the widened manifold anyway, so that leaves us with this option. Hopefully having the dual barrel will be better than the two inch and 932s. We'll see how we go. It's all test and experiment. The worlds look all right. Dad will come and pick that up tomorrow and get that on the Anglia before our next race. And I think my next video will be, I'm not too sure. If you've got any questions, happy to answer. Leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.